Thanks so much for being with us tonight. Grab your Bibles and something to write with, and we'll be right back. Well, hello, everyone. Thanks for being with us. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Love, I'm so excited because last week, uh, actually, in the Bible study, actually, you took the lead. And tonight, we're going to finish up that part that we didn't finish up last time. Mm -hmm. And um, you, we actually talked about authority in prayer. And really, um, I'm not just saying this because I'm your husband and I love you. I'm saying this because I know you're a woman of prayer. And that uh, this is a topic, prayer, and things uh, surrounding that, even though we probably talk more about uh, the authority that we have in prayer and that, and why that's so important. So people understand that, understands that that's vital that we understand that there is authority in prayer that God has given us. It's for a reason. And we have a, and God moves in the earth in the affairs of men through prayer, but he does it through a legal means where which he gives us that authority to pray. Amen. Amen. And the right and the right to pray. And you shared so many good things last time. We did some interaction. Um, and tonight we want to just pick up where we left off and just go from there. Amen. And whatever else that the, the Lord will give you tonight. I'm excited. I believe it will help a lot of people. Praise God. Uh, well, I want to start out again with uh, the statement made by John Wesley, mm. who said, It seems that God is limited by a prayer life that he can do nothing for humanity unless someone ask him. Mm. Yeah. And we know that the someones that ask him are we that have the legal right on the earth. So really what John, John Wesley tapped into and what he was saying is that prayer is a legal means by which we get God working in the earth on the affairs of men. That's what he's saying. And so it is so powerful. In other words, if we don't pray, God don't work on our behalf. It's not that he, he doesn't want to. Right. But, but prayer is the legal means. Gives him the access Gives and the legal right and to do it fairly and justly. And, and, and you explained that so good last week because in the fall in the garden of Adam and Eve, that authority that God originally gave man in Genesis chapter 1 was transferred to Satan mm -hmm. because of man's sin against God. That's and right. then what that meant was Satan became the little G God of this world. But now in order to move legally in the earth through man, God would still need a man to cooperate with him, ask him. Mm -hmm. And prayer becomes the vehicle where which God legally moves in the earth, both then and both now. That's why it's so important. Yeah. Amen. So actually we're asking God to do what he already wants to do. Yeah. He already wants to do these things because he said, whatever is done in heaven, he wants to done on, yeah. let it be done here on the earth. So it, we're asking him to do what he already wants to do. It just gives him a legal access. So, right. It, right. So, in other words, one of the things that came to my mind when you said that is not begging God to do something he no. doesn't want to do. Because we, we're not asking God to do something he doesn't want to do. We're asking him to do what it is his will already to do, but he needs us to ask. That's right. He needs us to ask. So if we find ourselves begging and pleading and about stuff, yeah, we're, it's, we're, not faith. It, it's not faith. Mm -hmm. We need to know what God said, mm -hmm. and then we need to ask in faith what it is his will to do. Once we know it, we can ask him, and that gives him the right to do what it is his will to do in the earth, but he needs us to ask. That's yes. authority in prayer. Amen. Yes. Praise God. Yes. I think Praise too God. few believers realize that. they. But we also have to realize that if we don't ask according to his will, mm -hmm. then he's not going to answer that. Right. Because the authority comes through his word, his revealed will, and those things. And I think that this is something that we all need to be reminded of. It, it should inspire us to pray. And, and it helps us in our prayer life to know that we are making a difference and how to make a difference, amen, by getting God involved in our life, amen. Amen, amen. So our last session, we left off in Matthew chapter 16. Mm. So if you have your Bibles, which I believe you have your Bibles and your notebooks and your pens, we're turning to Matthew chapter 16 and in verse 18 and 19, 
where Jesus was speaking here and he, he was talking to his disciples and he said, I tell you, Peter, upon this rock, I, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Mm -hmm. he, what did he say? He said he's going to build his church and he said the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. Yeah. So here we go. You know, sometimes people, well, I'm going to just throw this in because this came in love to, to my, to, sometimes people wonder what the gates of hell are. Well, I'm, I'm, I believe there's probably literal gates as well in yeah. the underworld. There. Amen. But this is really talking According about the, the powers, Bible. the powers uh, of hell. And, and so gates represent authority, represent power. It does both in the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness. So the powers of hell shall not prevail against the church that knows its authority. Amen. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Amen. Amen. So in verse, uh, so the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. So in even, so we know that the church is the restraining force on the earth today. Mm -hmm. Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse six. We are the restraining force. Yep. Through the power of the Holy Ghost, the church is. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And then in verse 19 of Matthew chapter 16, Jesus said, I give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Now I want to go back and read that again in the Amplified this time. It says, I give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind, declare to be improper and unlawful on earth must be what is already bound in heaven. And whatever you loose or declare lawful on earth must be what is already loosed in heaven. Now, when it says heaven here, that word heaven is not talking about the throne of God. The throne of God. Yeah, the there are actually mm -hmm. three heavens I'm the so Bible glad you're talks sharing about. That love. That's so good. Yeah, because people get that confused. They think, what? In heaven where God is? No, it's not these things in heaven. Yeah, there's no evil in heaven. That's right. Yeah. There's no wickedness, evil, sin, sickness, disease. Yeah, it's not, not that in heaven. Yeah, yeah, that's right. No, but he's talking about the first and the second heaven. Mm. Paul said in Corinthians, chapter tw 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2, he said he was caught up into the third, third heaven. heaven. So the third heaven is actually where the throne of God is, yeah. where God is. Where he abides. Where he abides. His there abode, the abode of God. Yeah. 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 And the first heaven is the air around us. Around this earth. Uh -huh. The earth and, and what's around it. Yeah. The second heaven is the stars, the galaxies, and the universe. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So Jesus told Brother Hagen, he said, if the believers or the church would take care of the exercising their authority, over the first three classes of devils. Yeah. He's talking about principalities, powers, and rulers of darkness. He said, if we would take care of exercising our authority over them, then Jesus said he would take care of the last one, which is the spiritual wickedness in the high places. Yeah. So in other words, th that scripture verse is found in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. Those types of, those levels of authority. Which we in, went over in, last in, week. We went over last scripture. week. Yeah. The point is, they're in the heavenlies. That's right. But not in the abode of God or the no, throne of God. Not this in the, in the first heaven. two. They're in the first, first two levels. And second heaven. And that's where we're dealing and exercising authority at. That's right. Amen. Pray that's over right. that. That's right. Yeah. So when it says here, I'll give you the keys of the kingdom. Keys we know represent what? Authority, dominion, mm -hmm. rulership. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he gave us authority and he says, whatever you bind, that word bind, declare to be improper and unlawful on the earth. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a lot of things when it comes to prayer that we uh, bind and declare to be improper yeah. and unlawful yeah. from sickness and disease, yeah. oppression, depression, yeah. fear, yeah. poverty, lack. Yeah. All of, those, All of things. those things. Yeah, we declare them to be improper. They are improper. They're because, works of the enemy. Because God calls them improper mm -hmm. for us because they are works of the enemy. They're works of the yeah, enemy. That's very good. Yeah. But he gave us authority over them. Yeah. So he says, we declare them to be improper and unlawful on the earth must be what is already declared improper and lawful in heaven. And mm -hmm. we know it's already declared improper because there isn't any of that yeah. in heaven. Yeah. You know, love, 
I'm sorry, but I think this is one of the great things that believers need to get so ingrained in their mind. Whatever is good is of God. Mm. Whatever is evil and bad, regardless of how it comes, is of the devil. It is Mm -hmm. of the devil. And we are not to put up with that. I mean, I, I think that we have been, we live in a fallen world and we see it so often and we actually have got trained to, to accept it or to believe that's just the way that it has to be. But that's not what God wants. And whatever is of evil or bad, uh, it's of the devil. Mm-hmm. It, whether directly or indirectly, it's coming from him. And we are to resist that. Mm-hmm. We are to actually exercise authority over that. I think that's so important that we that that we are mind we're mindful of that that we don't just give in and we just don't say well that's the way that it's got to be no what did God say and then he's given us the tools he's given us prayer and the use of our authority in this to overcome those things yes amen he has. amen amen so we are the ones with the keys of authority exercising dominion and rulership and authority over the earth in prayer by binding Satan and binding Satan's works, fear, sickness, disease, mm-hmm. lack, want, poverty, binding yeah. those things, declaring they're illegal and improper on the earth. But at the same time, then it says, and loosing what is mm-hmm. de- proper and lawful on the earth must be what is already loosed in heaven. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So we're also loosing what? The plan of God, the power of God, the will of God on the earth. Yeah. So loosing means to allow, to permit. That's right. Amen. Mm -hmm. All those things. Yeah. And and so through our prayer, through the authority in prayer, we allow, we loose, we permit what God already wants. He's just waiting for his creation to ask him for that to do that in this earth. That's right. Amen. Praise God. And authority in prayer is the way that it happens. That's the way that it happens. That's exactly right. Praise God. Yeah. So in Matthew 18, 18, let's turn there. You'll read that one together. It says, truly I tell you, here we go again. Jesus talking to his disciples. He said, whatever you forbid and declare to be improper and unlawful on the earth, what must be what is already forbidden in heaven and whatever you permit and declare proper and lawful on earth must be what is already permitted in heaven so here again we're exercising authority dominion and rulership in the first and second heaven not in the third heaven where god himself uh, abides but in the first and the second heaven, we which exercise is the air authority. around us yep. and the stars, the galaxies, and the universe. Yep. And then God in the third heaven makes that come to pass. That's exactly yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. So I like to read some of the different translations here. It says, a no on earth is a no in heaven. Mm. A yes <laughs> on earth is a yes in heaven. Mm. Go ahead. Yeah, that's the message translation. And then it says, whatever you open in prayer is opened in the heaven. And whatever you shut in prayer is shut in the heavens. Mm, like it. This is first and second heaven now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then another one says, whatever you lock on this earth is locked in heaven. Whatever you unlock on this earth is unlocked in heaven. Do you know many times when we're exercising our authority and dominion in prayer that we're unlocking and locking things? Mm. We're shutting doors that no man can open and opening doors that no man can mm. shut. I mean, mm. it's things that we are declaring and standing for yes. and uh, speaking according to God's word by exercising our authority. And it says the gates of hell shall not prevail against it and that we are the restraining force on the earth doing that through prayer. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, right. in the prayer. first and second yeah. heaven. Yeah. yeah. So as the church, as the believers, we just wanted to make you more aware of your authority in prayer and how vital and important it is that the church assemble and come together and pray yeah. together. That's good. Because here's that united corporate prayer we see all through the book of Acts with the uh, the the church that was birthed in the book of Acts, 
how she was birthed in prayer. She uh, persisted in prayer. She had set times of prayer. They mm -hmm. understood the importance. The early church understood the importance of prayer and coming together and praying and standing against different things. And they were being persecuted yeah. and uh, made some of them being martyred and yep, giving absolutely. their lives for. But the, the together in prayer mm -hmm. was, it was so powerful mm -hmm. because we see that um, from the very beginning, well, this, this is not just true in the New Testament, but let's just talk about for a moment, love, when the, the inception of the church, when Jesus told his, his disciples to go tarry in the city of Jerusalem till they be endued with power from on high. And uh -huh. They're in Acts chapter one, where they all assembled together and continued steadfastly in, in prayer. prayer. Mm -hmm. That preceded the power of God being poured out. Mm -hmm. And so once again, uh, asking God to do what it is his will to do mm -hmm. is, is key to God doing those things that it is his will to do mm -hmm. and establishing his will on earth as it is in heaven. There in Luke 24, he, you know, he said that they were to tear in the city of Jerusalem. Tarry into the city of Jerusalem. And to they be endued with power from on high. And so as they... Is as they were there together, as they were praying about this, because in Acts chapter one, at the very beginning, the very first things that Jesus talked about to his disciples was really not the restoration of of the Jewish nation. Well, that's what they were asking that's about. They were. The that's what they were asking. <laughs> that's just like us. We want to know how our nation's going to go. But he said the real thing was, you shall receive power. And what they did by praying together, they were, they were giving God the avenue to do it, what he wanted to do. And that was to, to, to send the promise and the blessedness of the Holy Spirit so that we all could receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit yeah. and fire and receive this power to be his witnesses. That's, that was the key of the Spirit of God being poured out. It was God's promise. But that promise came because the believers assembled, they obeyed God, they prayed, they prayed to were in the right place, they did what God asked them to do, and then God poured out that His power. Yes, Amen. yes, yes. So this is why we here at Cornerstone Fellowship Church are a praying church. Yeah. The Bible said in Deuteronomy 32, 30, one can chase a thousand, but two can put 10,000 to, to fly. flight. Praise God. So as a church, as we assemble together and we have set times of prayer, we have it on Thursdays from mm -hmm. 11 to 12. We You're have, live at church. Yeah, yeah. in-house. Anybody can join us. That's right, yep. anybody. Mm -hmm. And then we have Wednesday nights at this time. We're doing Wednesday night prayer services at 7 o'clock. 7 to 8. In-house. Yeah, in-house. Mm -hmm. Yep. So it's very vital and important that the church do assemble yeah. and come together That's, to pray yeah. and to bind the works of Satan that we would see would try to stick its ugly head up yeah. in our neighborhoods, communities, counties, yeah. stand against those things, awesome. but at the same time, loose the power of God so that God's will can be wrought and done in our counties and in our region. Yep, and in our country. How powerful is yeah, that? It and is. it is the church's responsibility. Yeah. And, and so one of the prayer times that is a little different on assembly is there, uh, we have Facebook Live prayer on Wednesdays Wednesday. at noon, mm -hmm. and people from all over, all over, all the states, yeah, Asians. other states, and, and and things join us at that time. There, mm -hmm. everybody, uh, and then here's the th amazing thing with me, love. So many people go back after that time because that time doesn't work for everybody, right? But because it's recorded, people go back and pray uh, with that, yeah, and, and 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 so this is so important. So. You know, even though we're teaching tonight on this, so people can at this very time on a Wednesday night um, uh, that people get this Aaron at seven. Actually, we're at church as well, mm -hmm. and we're praying with the uh, uh, with others, and we're just steady wanting to raise up believers mm -hmm. so that they, they can understand they understand prayer. 
Yep. And then there's always needs to be more leaders so that, for instance, on pre-service prayer. I was going to bring that up. Go ahead. Bring that up. Sunday morning's pre-service prayer at nine o'clock. That's before the service. Any of you all who are not committed in other areas on other teams and you can be here on a Sunday morning at nine o'clock, we meet in the hospitality room one. And I'm telling you, we pray from nine to nine thirty, nine thirty five and we end and come on out. But your presence would be much appreciated yeah. and it would make a difference bringing your supply in prayer. And the, Bo- the Bible says is when the body assembles and they pray, there is a higher dimension of authority and power that's released because there's more than one. And when there's more than one, there's a higher and greater degree mm-hmm. of authority and power that's released and exercised in that time of prayer. Yeah. So we appreciate you and take this seriously because Jesus yeah. even said in his word, he said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. Amen. He didn't say a house of healing, a house of miracles, a house of, t- he said a house a of house prayer because he understood yeah. Because the really, the, the truth is if that if it becomes a house of prayer, it can become those other things. That's right. It can become those other things. Prayer, prayer lays that track. Prayer lays the track. It always precedes those great things and moves of God and God wants us to be in one accord on those things because yeah, where there's together. one accord there's it just means it's not just one or two asking for this god is looking you know when he said desire there in first corinthians chapter 14 i believe verse one and two he talks about desire spiritual gifts mm-hmm. well he didn't he we think a lot of times that he's talking to the pastor that he's talking to the entire church yes he he's is. exhorting the whole church, church to desire the things of god it, it, in this case uh, spiritual gifts. That's how they're manifested. When it's more than just one or two people wanting those things, it's because the body comes together, just like in prayer, mm-hmm. and wanting together to pray, yeah. then great things happen. Great right? things happen. Amen. And so we have a lot of great prayers, and we're just yes, believing we that more people are going to be raised up so yeah. that we, we can We appreciate be, the ones yeah. that are praying right now and coming out on Sunday mornings, yeah. Wednesday nights, yep. Thursday mornings. We appreciate you. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And we thankful. have a praying church, yes, but it's going to only grow That's because right. we're talking about these things because it truly makes a difference. It I, well, does. Let's close with this final thought, love. Um, Dr. Gary Wood, who's ministered to in this church a number of times, has gone home to be with the Lord. He died and went to heaven as a, a young adult killed in an automobile accident. Jesus sent him back to the earth That's after right. he walked the, in heaven with Jesus. Jesus showed him certain things and said, you go back. But one of the things he told the people is that before his second coming, before Jesus' second coming, there would be a spirit of prayer that would return to the church. He sure did. And I believe we're already seeing it. Mm-hmm. I believe we're in it. I believe we're seeing it. And this is exciting because this is what Jesus prophesied uh, would, would, would happen. And we're part of that move. That's right. And so praise God. Amen. It is now. It is right this now. This is the move. Is, we yeah. are the move. Yeah. You are the move yeah, on the right. earth today. And we need to we need to understand that our prayers make a difference. So, Pastor Deb and I, thank you tonight for joining us for this yes, Bible we study. We we always are believing that your life is enriched by this, helped by this, strengthened by this, and made to be replicated in others through mm-hmm. this. And we want you to know we love you. We call you blessed. And we look forward to seeing you again for another episode of Airspace.